Alleluia. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and with the, with the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does, not, and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of his sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We'll read Psalm 118 responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy The Lord is my strength and my song. And my 
there is a sound of exaltation and victory. The, the right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. Up again, upside down. Mm, just a minute here. <laughs> okay, this is the second lesson, a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died since death came through a human being. The resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will may be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of a, to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Well, good morning, Grace. Happy Easter. So let's try this. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, that was fun. Um, it really is wonderful to see all of you here this morning. And uh, for those of you who may not know, I am Father Chris, and uh, I started at Grace as the priest in charge here about two weeks ago. So this is my third Sunday over two weeks. And we timed it with today in mind. We wanted me to be able to be here today because it gave us just enough time to plan and celebrate Holy Week and, of course, Easter morning together. So for me, Easter is definitely the easiest Sunday to celebrate because it's already a celebration. We're already celebrating, and that always feels good. So it's a really nice time to be here with you all. Uh, In fact, someone recently told me that Easter morning pretty much preaches itself because it's already, yeah, because it already feels so good to be here. Uh, But we should remember that what's true today here uh, is actually true every day, that Christ is risen not just on Easter Sunday, but he's risen every day in our lives. And all of our scriptures, our church traditions, our shared worship, individual prayer, the community work that we do together, it can all be experienced from that perspective. The risen Christ never stops being with us. But it's still a good day for us to set aside, especially just something we dedicate, especially to celebrate that. And we're going to have an entire Easter season to continue the celebration. So you, you all probably know Eastertide lasts for, what, how many days? That's a good guess. It it lasts for 50 days. For 50 days. (laughs) And so for 50 days, we'll have the opportunity to continue to celebrate Easter. Uh, It will end on uh, June 5th when we celebrate Pentecost. And we can spend that time of Easter reflecting on all the ways that the Spirit is alive and well in the world. The way it's, it's alive in our work. The way it's alive in our families. The way it's alive in ourselves. And if we can't see the risen Lord at work, if we don't notice it, that may only mean that like Peter in our reading from John today, we're having a hard time seeing what's in front of us. That like Peter, we may see the linen wrappings lying in the tomb, the cloth that had been on Jesus' head that had been rolled away and was sitting by itself. Though we scratch our heads and we wonder about the mystery. Where is he, we wonder? Where did the body go? What does it all mean? But then hopefully, we've got someone in our life, a beloved disciple, who, like in John's gospel, also goes to the tomb, sees the same things we saw, and is able to put it all together. The beloved disciple sees and believes. He understands the real reason for the empty tomb. Christ is risen. He's not there. And that's really the message for Easter. It's the only message for Easter, or for any morning for that matter. Our Lord is alive. It's hard to grasp sometimes, uh, just as it was for Peter, but hopefully all, all of us one day will be able to see that tomb not as a place of death, but as a place where death was transformed into life. Now, as I mentioned, I just started here a couple weeks ago, and it still feels very new to me. Uh, and if, if you haven't been here in a while, this may seem a little new to you, too. This may be something that seems, yeah, a little new as well. And uh, if you are somebody who's, who's here uh, maybe for the first time or somebody who hasn't been able to visit in a while, we are so glad that you are here. All are welcome, no matter where you are on your life or spiritual journey. This is a place that we would like you to think of as home. 
In fact, this is a place we like you to think of as an Easter place, a place that is full of life. Now, last week, I had a chance to visit with Bishop Polson, who's the bishop of the Diocese of Oklahoma, and he thinks the world of grace. He thinks the world of this parish. And he commented to me that when he talks about the folks here, he's always impressed and he always likes to share with people the fact that he loves your commitment and energy that he saw you bringing to all of your ministries. He just, he really loves this place. And to me, that's just another way of saying that this is a place of the risen Christ. Now, Easter always gives us a viewpoint that confronts the fear and power of death. From the earliest days of Christianity, theologians have critiqued this world, and they've pointed out all the ways that it ignores or encourages or even celebrates dominance and violence, the way it pits people against one another, and the way it pits us sometimes against creation. And, you know, we know why this happens. It's so that we can feel powerful or that we can feel safe or we can feel secure. But that approach is ultimately dysfunctional, It promotes selfishness and greed, jealousy, and even hatred. But the risen Christ gives us a different choice, always moving us towards life, even when we're surrounded by what I just described. When we show generosity and compassion, when we show concern and genuine care for others, which I have seen in this place, when we engage with one another and we don't look away, that's the discipleship of life And Jesus himself practiced that discipleship. In fact, he said, everyone will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, this morning we had an 830 service. It was the Easter vigil. And we had a baptism. An 11-month-year-old girl, uh, 11-month-year-old girl? 11-month-old girl. And her name was Lainey Elizabeth Fincher. And she was here with her family and with her sponsors and other members of this parish. And it was just wonderful. Easter is the perfect day for a baptism. And if possible, we should always have one on Easter morning. And I mentioned this at 8.30. If any of you all know anyone who would like to get baptized, let us know. My cousin has a kid right next to him, right there. (laughs) Jackson's like, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. As part of the baptismal service... Lainey's parents, along with her godparents and sponsors, took vows, rejecting the culture of death. They renounced all powers that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. They renounced the desires that draw them away from God. They vowed to put their trust in God's grace and love. Then every person present at that service renewed their own baptismal vows. We all committed to seeking and serving Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Every person that was present committed to respecting the dignity of every human being. Through Laney's baptism, we all embraced God's culture of life. And it's the culture of life where we always find the risen Christ. Now, when I was baptized as an adult, and I was baptized at a Easter vigil service on Easter morning... I was warned before the service began that I might not yet believe in every single part of the baptismal covenant quite yet, but I shouldn't worry about that too much. And at the time, all that did was make me worry about it, right? I was just like, oh, well, that does sound like something I should worry about. I was told to live my life as as if the vows of the covenant had already been fully uh, implanted in me and just see what happens. Now, no one lives out the baptismal covenant perfectly, not all of the time. I mean, maybe Jesus did, but that's setting the bar very high. For the rest of us, we just have to do the best we can. And then after a while, if you're practicing this, you might find that the risen Christ no longer seems like maybe an intellectual puzzle or some old story that we hear in church or like some ancient metaphor for all things that have to die away in life so that something else can be born in its place. I mean, you hear that sometimes, a comparison between the resurrection and that. And the risen Christ can be all of those things. In fact, it can be all of those things at once. But one day you might also discover that Easter just is. It it just is your reality. And I'm not sure of the exact moment when that happened for me. I'm not sure when the puzzle, the story, the metaphor of the empty tomb simply became Christ among us. 
But it did happen. That moment did come. So who has seen the risen Lord? As much as I think it helps to think about Peter running to the tomb but missing the truth and the beloved disciple entering after Peter and putting it all together, neither of those experiences tell the whole story. The first herald of the gospel was actually Mary Magdalene. She's the first person to notice the stone removed from the tomb. She's the first person to encounter the resurrected Jesus in the flesh. She's the first person who can say, I have seen the risen Lord. Now that might have surprised many, including Peter, but it would not have surprised the beloved disciple who had already been to the empty tomb and believed. So what does this tell us today? What does this say to us? I think it's easy to think about rebirth this time of year. I mean, it's spring after all, and life is popping up all over the place. I recently came across pictures of a baby platypus, a baby platypus. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I would put that thing up against baby bunnies or baby chicks any day of the week. So a baby platypus, a sign of new life. Yep, that's what it was for me. And I also think it's easier to experience Easter in a place like this, in a place like Grace, which is bustling with energy, so much so that our bishop continues to bring it up every time he's asked about this place. As we look down the road through Easter and Pentecost, I mentioned that Easter will last 50 days until we get to Pentecost, and then we'll stretch into our long, hot Oklahoma summer, which we have every year, and eventually we'll make it into fall. I have faith that the energy here will continue, that we'll be able to maintain it. And I think we're going to need it, too, because this world still has plenty of that culture of death. War and economic uncertainty will continue to dominate the news, I have no doubt, Poverty, drug dependency, poor health, crime, and family brokenness will not have gone away. It'll still be a part of our experience as well. We might need to help one another remember that Easter never really went away. And throughout the year, we can help each other find the risen Christ. We'll find him in the hospitals, in the federal courthouse, in the neighborhoods surrounding our church, We'll find him by working with other churches in this town and in our diocese. We'll find the risen Christ in our children's and young adult ministries, in our vacation Bible school, and in some gigantic slide we evidently inflate every year in the summer and put out in the parking lot. I still haven't seen it yet, but it sounds amazing. We'll find it in our Bible studies and formation classes and as we train new folks for baptism. It will be in our chapel services, in weddings and funerals that we hold here at the church. It will be in our friendships, and it will be in the joy we have in working together. In short, it will be in the love we have for one another. In all these places and many more, we will find the risen Christ, because it's not a case of whether or not he's there, but whether we can see him, whether we can see what lies right before our eyes, so that we too may believe. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may kneel, sit, or stand, as is your custom. The prayers of the people. Bound together in Christ in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father. We pray for peace from things that separate us from one another and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially St. Augustine, Oklahoma City, the Diocese of Southern Virginia, the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania, the Diocese of Pennsylvania, the Diocese of Cuba, and the Anglican Church of Australia. We pray for this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Paulson, our bishop, Chris and Tom, our clergy, Alex and Pat, our wardens, vestry, delegates, all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, have mercy. We pray for the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. We pray for our leaders especially, Joe, our president, Kamala, our vice president, Mark Wayne, our congressman, James and Jim, our senators, Kevin, our governor, and Marlon, our mayor. Lord, have mercy. We pray for prisoners, the oppressed, all those in need or suffering, especially Quinn and Nancy, Bill, Dennis C., Dennis C. Jr., James and Shirley, John and Sharon, Pat and Joe, Sakina, Eliso, Vitali and Natalia, Finley, Tara, Jeremy, Ronnie, those impacted by war, especially in Ukraine, all emergency responders, the United States military, and those whose suffering is known only to God. We pray for those who have died, especially in Ukraine. Lord, have mercy. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. We pray for those in our parish, especially Flora Jean, Jean B., Kelly, Brandon, and Archie. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us welcome one another in the name of Christ. Thank you for a message of
please be seated for announcements. <laughs> Uh, Father Chris, uh, we have something for you. Keep looking. Keep looking. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, our scout, we, if anybody out there has got boys or girls, kindergarten through 12th grade, we have a scout place for them. We have a pack for our boys and girls, kindergarten through 5th, and we have two troops for our 6th through 12th graders. Uh, the older kids just went to the swim and fitness and uh, did their swim tests because they are going to go take scuba lessons in Tinkiller. And our little ones are getting ready to go to iFly in Oklahoma City. The, the bigger little ones go up slowly, and the little bitty ones, the little, the little guys go, whoosh. it's really neat to watch them. <laughs> uh, Father mentioned the 50 days of Christmas in the back, and I hope you got one. There are handouts. I mean, I'm sorry, Easter, wrong, wrong season. The 50 days of Easter, <laughs> there are handouts in the back, and it is 50 days and 50 ways to celebrate Easter. And there's something for every day of the 50 days. And please do pick one of those up. They're great fun. Thank you. Oh, and oh, and come over. There's lots of food. Come over after and uh, partake of coffee and some snackies with us. keep the uh, announcements very short again thank you all so much for coming this morning it just means the world to us that you're here uh, i just wanted to recognize some people really quickly i wanted to recognize alex wilson our senior warden who helped us pull all of these these services off for this week um ken and the choir have done a whole bunch more services than they normally have to do all week long so thank you for that uh, our junior warden, Pat Wilcox, also was involved in the detailed planning of all the services we did for Holy Week, so thank you, Pat. You probably already know that BJ was here every day as well, helping us get everything organized. And last but certainly not least, Nancy Scott. So everybody came together to do our Holy Week services, and it just, it just was wonderful. So thank you all, everybody. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, okay. Well, before we do that, uh, birthdays. Does anybody have a birthday or an anniversary this week? Oh, uh, we do. Okay. So we've got a prayer for you. Thank you. Of course. Okay, I'm just going to lay my hand over here. Yes, thank you. Thank oh, God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to know that I'm not going to uh, be able to forget that. You all will remind me. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat>
The Lord be he with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with... Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made for us, you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. We ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father... For thine is the kingdom, the power,
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.